except for Jumbo. And look how thick the walls are. Now, these are radioactive tumbleweeds. They put a fence around the uh, area that uh, uh, the, uh, the, cr the crater, they filled in the crater. These are radioactive tumbleweeds, but uh, that was just that generation. It was radioactive from fallout, not because they were absorbed uh, from the roots. And then here is, and that's not a very good slide, but that's going to be little boy. And here's the, uh, that was Enola Gay, that was little boy. And here is a mock-up of Fat Man. And here is Boxcar. It's not as well known as the Enola Gay. Boxcar is in the Dayton Air Force Museum. And then here is a photograph of Nagasaki from the support plane. And here is Nagasaki. This is the only, uh, there, were, there was a Japanese photographer who took, I believe it was eight photographs on the day, and this is one of those photographs, and he survived, and this is a Hiroshima, and he said that he could not bring himself to take any more images. He was so stunned by what he saw, but this is one of the photographs uh, taken on that day. This is the only building, uh, I am told, I have never been to Hiroshima, uh, that is still kept as a memorial. And the reason Hiroshima and Nagasaki could come back and be the thriving cities they are today is that the bomb was detonated 2,000 feet in the air, which means that the ball of fire does not touch the earth, which means that the radiation is not driven into the soil, which means that the cities can come back. Whereas at Trinity site, exploded only 100 feet in the air, the ball of fire touches the earth, drives it into the soil, and that is uh, essentially forever going to be fenced. Uh, this, these are Nagasaki shots. And this is the famous photograph of the woman who wore the multicolored kimono. Uh, white uh, reflects... Uh, radiation and color uh, and, uh, and heat, and black absorbs it. And so you can see the design of her kimono uh, burned into her uh, back. Uh, the war was over. This brought the uh, war to an end. Here's the famous signing of the peace treaty on the battleship Missouri. And then after the war, the scientists, really for the very first time, became popular figures, popular heroes. Everybody knew who these two people were. You didn't need any captions. <clears throat> and this bleak, deserted area of New Mexico, they were going to turn it into a national park. They had all kinds of plans to have a visitor center and walks, but it had become uh, 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 the Alamogordo, the Alamogordo was now the, the White Sands Missile Range, it was become a missile range, and no missile range commander wanted tourists wandering up and down, and so it was never made into a national park. So thank goodness for the Atomic Heritage Society who are going to keep these things for us. Now, comic books. Dagwood splits the atom. <clears throat> and who wrote the introduction to this comic book? General Leslie R. Groves, urging every young person to read this so that you can understand the new world that had just been uh, and then Japanese cartoonists. I know one person mentioned last night that she was married to, uh, to someone of Japanese ancestry. The Japanese cartoonists are much more perceptive than the Americans. And here is the most famous Japanese <coughs> cartoon creator, uh, character. Uh, he is a robot. He is powered by atomic energy, uh, Astro Boy, and he is world famous. But the, and here is another Japanese cartoonist, and I highly recommend this. And if your kids like manga, as I suspect they do, have them do a manga assessment. This is the first manga. The cartoonist's name is Keiji, Nakaz Keiji Nakazawa. The cartoon book is called Barefoot Gen, G-E-N, which means roughly every man. It's four volumes in English. It's 10 volumes 
in Japanese. It is the most widely uh, sort of appreciated, it's the most famous comic book in the entire history of Japan uh, because the artist, Keiji Nakazawa, was himself six years old living in Hiroshima when the bomb went off. And so this story is a fictionalized, slightly autobiographical tale. I really recommend it. Your kids will love it. Barefoot Gen. It's the cartoon story of Hiroshima. And he's as hard on the Japanese militarists as he is on the Americans. Now, how do you end a story like this? Well, I always like to end with this image. Uh, it seems to me uh, pictures are worth a thousand words, and that one uh, says it all. Uh, there's J. Robert Oppenheimer uh, toward the end of his life. Heavy smoker, he dies of lung cancer in 1967. But uh, you can just see uh, the anguish uh, in that face. So. Uh, it's called Barefoot Gen, G-E-N, mm -hmm. by Nakazawa. What was the date, July, for the transition? Uh, July 16th. 16th. Yeah. That's when they opened open it up, right? Uh, well, they, they, they open it up twice a year, but because it's usually so hot in July, they open it up in the first uh, Saturday in October and the first Saturday in May though they do occasionally open it up for celebrations like the 50th and, you know, the 55th and 60th, things like that. But it's usually just beastly hot. Please. Why didn't they bring Einstein to Los Alamos? Okay. Well, why, why wasn't Einstein brought to, to Los Alamos? Um, Groves was a, suspicious of his left-wing political leanings. Uh, and he was. He was very left-wing. So he came to Los Alamos a number of times after the war was over, but he was not there um, uh, during the war. And even if he had been there, he wouldn't have been of much practical use because uh, sort of he was, all his theories, his best theories had been promulgated, and this was as much an engineering task as it was. Uh, they, they knew the science. They had to sort of engineer it. <clears throat> 